Hello, we are back with our conversation on addiction in teenagers. And joining us to weigh in on the conversation and just to help us know how to support teenagers dealing in addiction is Bill Bekunda. Bill is an addiction prevention professional and he's the director of Bekunda Recovery Homes. Welcome to the show, Bill. Thank you very much. And I'll just start with my first question. How can someone, or what is addiction? For starters and how can someone know they are addicted addiction is loss of control and this loss of control leads to doing things that will hurt your relationships or your lifestyle or your emotions but you keep on doing these things so you lose control so when you want to talk about addiction the only thing to know is have you lost control there is something that's circulating right now, which is if you blame the addict, put your phone down for 24 hours, and every time you think about it, then you know then what you addiction is. What they are going. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that is addiction. Lots so we of are control. Here a group of addicts. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So you've yeah. suffered addiction yourself because we've heard your story before. Um, tell us about that journey, like really quickly. And then um, how it led to the work that you're doing right now. How it relates to my work. Uh, well, I now decided to go full force into making people understand addictions. That's why I became a prevention, uh, an addiction prevention and recovery what? Uh, professional. Yeah. Because people don't understand it. Mm, okay. And some addictions, actually most addictions are blamed on the person's moral character or behavior. So they say, oh, this man is chasing after women or he cannot stay with one person, or this, uh, this person smokes too much, drinks, they are losing control, they are out of control, it's affecting their finances. Yeah. But when it comes to me, I will tell you how I became an addict. I didn't want to drink, I didn't want to smoke, I used to even uh, lecture my buddies at school and say, you guys, don't smoke your father's money, don't drink, mm. it's not good. Yeah. That was in my senior one and senior two first term. Then, uh, at the beginning of the second term, I was encouraged. You know, the, the people who smoke and drink and do all those yeah. things, uh, they, they are the so-called yeah. cool guys. Yeah. They, are, they are the cool guys. Yeah. You know, so uh, they convinced me to go with them. And I was like, to escape from school, go have a drink. The day one. And I thought to myself, let me go with these guys, see their mess, and tomorrow I'll give them a proper lecture. <laughs> and so I went with them. We went hiding, we reached there, we started, they started drinking. I didn't want to drink, but I saw them getting out of their fear and start to relax yeah. and start to laugh and shout. So I said, for now, let me just be like them. Let me drink, be like them. And then tomorrow I'll tell them what they are doing wrong. So I take a sip now. We started with a local, local drink. It smells bad. When you put it in the mouth, it's bitter. You swallow it, you cough, it burns, it goes down. But, and you know, that's a very short time. Yeah. But then I started feeling good. So I'm like, ah, another and another. And I got drunk. And then my priorities changed henceforth. I felt like I want to feel this again. Yeah. So you see this, I went, I did not want. Yeah. Even when I drank, I did not want to. Yeah. When I started drinking, I did not like, like it. it. I liked the effect. When I got the effect, I wanted to do it again. That doesn't mean that I wanted my performance to go down because my worst performance by that time was the third in class. I was in St. Mary's College, Kisubi. Wow. At the end of that time, I was the 25th. That means the drinking directly affected my yeah, academics, yes. academic performance. Did I want it? No. no. Did it happen? Yes. I got a suspension in senior four. On that day, I went to drink. Had I planned that I'm going to drink so I can be suspended? No. I was doing senior six. Uh, I was doing physics, chemistry, mathematics. I mean, biology. I was expelled between the practicals and the fine and the theory. Wow. Because of drinking. Was that intentional? No. Are you seeing why I'm telling you that addiction creeps on you? Yeah. yeah. It comes, it gives you what you feel you want and it rewards you with that negativity. Now, people judge you according to, to the, the negativity. negativity. 
whatever an addict does is absolutely unintentional. Yeah. True. True. Even going to pick the drink or the drug or perform whatever action they are performing, it is not intentional. It is a response to the need that they have developed. Yeah. For that, that high. For that whatever it is, is that they have lost control over. And let me compare it to a slippery slope, right? Uh, if a stone is rolling down, physics tells us that something has got to stop it. Yeah. If nothing stops it, it will roll until... Yeah. You yeah. see? So that is the same thing. When you get addicted to something, you cannot stop on your own. An intervention has to come in and stop you. So the interventions we have today are rehabilitation, counseling, yeah. therapies, and all those. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Are you absolutely saying that if you're in a good place and you're in a steady state of equilibrium in your life mm. or your emotions, yes. then you have nothing to feel, you, chances are higher that, that you will not get addicted. You will not, that need will yes, not. Yes, so there's nothing to feel. Usually there is a, a hole. Or, 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 at least to being, or at least you know how to cope. Oh, yeah, because oh, yeah. I feel that's like balance. We can't that's the balance yeah, I need. Yeah. That's mm. the balance. Everybody goes through problems, but mm -hmm. how we deal is that's yeah, the balance. Different. But yeah. so are you saying there are people who have a hole and they're looking for something to fill that hole? Everybody has a hole. Mm. Yeah. Everybody fills it with something. Yes. But to what extent or to what effect does it have? For instance, you would say that some people fill the hole with food. Yeah. And a person is who way overweight yeah, and you're wondering can't you <laughs> see <laughs> are you seeing what i mean yeah. but every time they eat they feel happy they feel comfortable they feel relieved now it becomes a problem if it is affecting you negatively someone would say oh people like saying i have an addiction to music it is not an addiction if it is not affecting you negatively so people just play around with the word wow, yeah. And because of playing around with that word, they make it look so normal mm. that now the person who is actually suffering it yeah. yes. becomes a bad person. Yes. Oh, I'm addicted to my music is my addiction mm. because I like music. Mm. But if you listen to music, there is, there is one, uh, uh, one person highly respectable in, in the addiction field. He's called Gaba or Gabo, I, depending on where you come from. And he was, he was saying that his addiction was classical music. He was a highly qualified doctor. So he would go, there was a time when he was supposed to perform a delivery. And then he went, but then he had this urge to go and to the store and just get, you know, one, one, uh, what are they called? Yeah. LPs. Yeah. Okay. So he goes there and then, you know, the, the, the lure in which the salesperson is, say, there's this new one, have you seen this one? And he missed the delivery, he missed a few hours of work, and then he came back. And he said he could spend up to $8,000 on just buying classical music. You see, it was affecting his finances, it was affecting his work. It was a problem. But someone would be like, this guy just loves music. Now, that is an addiction. And he had to overcome it, going through certain steps, to be able to stop and pull back. So, when we talk about addictions, it's about saying, Look at yourself, see what you're doing, how is it affecting you? Okay, so Bill, what would you say are the biggest challenges of dealing with an addict? And this is both at a professional level and also with the, the ordinary community that surrounds themselves with these people. The challenges of dealing with a person who is suffering an addiction. Um, one, you know what denial means? It means you don't know and you think what you know is correct. So I will tell you I'm a white man. Okay. Now how do you, and I'm, you, all, you, all you have to do is tell me, no, you're not white. And I'm supposed to believe it, but I don't. That is how it is to deal with someone who is suffering an addiction. What you're doing is wrong. Now they get to a point where some, they, they now start to understand that what they are doing is wrong, but then they weigh. Mm. That I get relief from this. So this is better than this. And I'll tell you, for instance, when it comes to drug abuse or a drug addiction, whereby when you 
sit down. This is what families like to do. They sit down with a person who is suffering an addiction, he drinks or uses drugs, and they ask him, can you see how this is destroying your life? Like to the person who is using, is it destroying their life or it's making their life better? It's making their life better. Especially so you're telling him a lie? Yeah. When they would tell me, Bill, alcohol is destroying your life. I would be like, it is not. It is making me happy. happy. It's making me go through all these things that I are disturbing me. Yes. Are you seeing what I mean? So as the addiction is developing, the bigger problem is at the beginning. When you're just beginning to discover that somebody has a problem. They haven't reached on a point of acceptance. Maybe their finances are still fine. Maybe their schoolwork is yeah. still good. Maybe they are still presentable. Maybe they can still appear at work. But you can see the progression and you know where it's going. And they are asking you a question. Look here. When I don't drink, I'm not creative. Those are artists. Yeah. When I don't smoke, I am not uh, active. Yeah. When I don't do this, I am not this. And they are telling you the truth. You on the other side are seeing it destroying my life. They are looking from the inside. So you sit down with the person and say, last night you were a mess. He had blacked out, he was on the floor, he was bringing, regurgitating or whatever. But guess what? In that state, he was happy. So does he ever get to a point where he sees that, yeah, he was happy, but now see my wife's head. I beat her up. Or... I didn't pay school fees. Where did that money go? Yes. I spent. Oh, I I was I I, I spent on it on alcohol. I I am that who broke that table. Yes. I just wanted it. Like at what point does uh -huh. he realize and I'm that feeling my so good feeling? I get. I love the feeling. Yes. But uh, do, do they start to see a trail of their damage? Okay. Now let me tell you. When I see the damage, mm. when I drink again. Or use a drug, the damage is reduced. So that's the way that you're talking about. That's the way. I mean, it's no longer damage to me; it is manageable. Yes. Because my mind has been re-compromised. So I'll be there. So you tell yourself, that is, "I will not touch her." That is. Even if you tell yourself that, the whole thing is this: you want to come from the point of "I am confused," "I am stuck," "I don't know what to say." To drinking and now it is okay yeah. and therefore i'll repeat exactly what i did yeah. that is why a lot of the time force is required yes. whereby there has got to be a forced intervention you cannot advise a person on what they don't know you can't ad you can't keep telling me you're white when i know I'm, when i know i'm black yes. are you seeing what i'm saying it won't help anything so i need to be dissociated from that action yeah drinking or drugging or whatever it is and then the mind comes to a realization that it can operate without it and then it starts thinking without it and you know that the brain bullies the body yes. that's true yeah. when the brain wants something now it has been subjected to enjoying this feeling over and over now you are reject you, you are preventing it from getting it so it will stop i mean when 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 you're thirsty your brain is dehydrated, we say, right? It will stop the salivary glands from releasing saliva. Your mouth is dry. What will you do? <laughs> you need it. So the brain will make the body of the person very uncomfortable. So it manifests from the mental to the physical. And someone becomes agitated. They become angry. They become uneasy. And all they want is that. Because they know as soon as they take it, they will come down. Yeah. To a point where, in my case, if someone would even as much as tell me, Bill, let's meet at five. He's buying. All my agitation, everything we goes down. down. In anticipation. And I relax. Because oh, it's wow. about the solution. Oh. Now, when we are dealing with a for instance, a drug addict, it's not about stopping to use. That's a must. They have to stop using. But when they stop using, what do they need to do? Yeah. Coping. Managing. Yeah. That is what is most important. And so we say that it is always best to stop it before it starts. Because once yeah. it starts, yeah. it doesn't want to be stopped. 
tell a person who drinks every day that what they are doing is leading them. No, it might not be wrong. You can drink every day, you can take poison if you want, it's not wrong. It will only have bad consequences like this. The thing is that when it starts, stopping it becomes the bigger problem. So dealing with a person once the problem has begun, making them get that realization is difficult because I was told over and over, Bill, you have a problem. You need help. Can you seek help? I'll tell them, no, I don't have a problem. And I knew I had a problem, but I knew I didn't have a problem because I knew the problem is I take a little bit too much. Yeah. <laughs> and wow. any question, I can sort it out anytime. And these are the same answers you'll get. Yeah. Even yeah. you yourself, yeah. Yeah. with yeah. whatever that's bothering you, yeah. you yeah. sit, uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, and I tell you, put it down for a day if you don't have work and we see. Let's start from there. Yeah. And you see, there's this social media lure that has come. Yeah. Of course, we know about the scrolling, we know about all that. But we were not informed about these things. No. Yeah. So even me, I used to wonder, but I love this thing and I'm scrolling. And swiping. Now, at the end of the day, you don't need to swipe. Like TikTok, you just beat, will move. Yes. Move. Uh -huh. If you spend too long on it, it starts. Yeah, it moves. Or when the clip like finishes it. Yeah. Yes. That is for the continuous. Uh, yeah. Now, you will find that if you're not conscious about it, you will not stop. But if you've already been engaged in it that now you can't stop, even if they tell you to stop, you'll be like, you know what, this is my problem, let me deal with it. Yes, yes. Yeah, so when you know, so the earlier a person knows these things, the better. Yeah. And that is why I told you at the beginning that I'm into... Prevention. Not just prevention. Because when we use these words, people be like, our oh, prevention, no. It is about enlightening people. Let the masses know about this. But I can assure you that even the media, we are more interested in all the mm. losing color, mm. what we were talking about earlier, you know, and all this entertainment news mm. that we will not pay attention to things which will even affect us. And I say that whatever affects you reduces your productivity. That's true. I have talked to companies, there was only one that was beginning, then the boss had to leave and it was going to be a big opening. And I tell them that, look here, if you don't deal with the mental health of your workers, yeah. your productivity is not to go, going to go up. At the end of every season or end of, end of year, you call motivational speakers to talk to depressed people. Yes. What are you changing? Mm. This is how finances, hey, this is how you motivate them. To, and then he goes back to his wife who is causing him problems. He doesn't know what to do. Or his son is drinking or using drugs, etc., etc. So we are saying that once, if you had once in a year, whereby you'd make an asse you, you assemble your people and give them tools that would help them manage themselves, manage their homes, they would have better homes. Because if your husband slaps the door in your face, you'll go to work and you'll want to slap it in someone else's face. Yeah. It's a effect. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the productivity as well goes down. So there is a lot that is managed by this mind of ours yeah. and it is driven by the addictions that that we experience. Yeah, um, Bill, we basically, we talk to parents here and I'm sure you already know that. I think as a mom watching you speak, like my antennas are already up, like what yeah. triggers do I need to look out for? and and also, what is the approach? Because you talked about telling you that you have a problem yes. and you not seeing it and judging them based on, you know, the morals or the, the, the consequences of their actions. How do I, as a parent, approach this monster? Okay. To start with the triggers and then the approach uh, in okay. terms of helping our children. Um, I will start with you, the parent. That if you hear something from three different people, that you don't like, think twice about it. Don't let it be like, these guys are on my case, what's yeah. wrong with them? Find out what's wrong. That's yeah. number one. But the, the biggest, ident uh, the, biggest uh, the number one way in which you can start identifying that something is wrong is when, for instance, when you have a child and you see a change in their 
behavior. It's not just, we like saying they're teenagers, oh, they'll pass through it, or even us who went through it. Are you happy about what you went through and how you went through it? No, if you are not, you are not happy. So when you see a change, this person was, this young boy or girl was very active, noisy, playful. All of a sudden she's, and, and it's not for one day or two days because that is normal. Two weeks, three weeks, there is that change. The person is withdrawing. They want their space. Yeah. In my house, you want to lock your door. <laughs> by locking, you know, uh, <laughs> not that table, but cigars. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? You see those changes. There are other changes when it comes to drugs. Like, for instance, I tell parents, very important, when you're talking to your child, don't do what Bill did. Daddy says, Bill, come, we talk. Bill, come here. I go and sit where the cameraman is. Because I am smelling things which I don't want him to smell. Get your son or daughter, make them sit here. Or oh, if yeah. for dads, for us, we can put the chair face you. Uh -huh. Where have you been? How was your day? Did you have fun? If he's not uncomfortable, nothing is wrong. Yeah. If he's getting... Because you do it to a child. Yeah. They'll not be bothered. They'll be like, it's okay. But when they start doing something that is... Because even children have this feeling that when you look into their eyes, you can read what they've been... <laughs> You know, you've just done that, and when you've said men, and I remember a time when my brother, he was maybe 16, and he came back early in the morning, early meaning like 6 a.m., and I remember they, my dad took him, and they sat down in the compound. Yes. He put a chair here, and he put my exactly. brother there. But I, so that's maybe what they were doing. And Number here, one, like, it is a position of authority. Yes. Uh -huh, let's talk like men now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm close enough to... <laughs> But okay, let me. <laughs> but uh, but uh, the 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 way we teach it or we, we we tell people to do it is in there are three things that that a parent needs to do to secure their child's uh, shape up their child's behaviors as they grow up. One there is monitoring, then there is two boundaries, and then there is uh, okay, wait boundaries and. Uh, Okay, let me start with monitoring and bonding, sorry. Monitoring boundaries and bonding. Mm. Now, in my era when I was growing up, there was one thing that parents didn't do. There was no bonding. No. Yeah. Yeah. It was monitoring yeah. and, and boundaries. boundaries. Yeah. We don't go here in my house, we don't do this, da 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 da, finished. Monitoring, you go here, the neighbor has seen you, your son is here, Chiboko, yeah. I don't know, I think. <laughs> And then we come to today's parents, they us. Well, we are like, we want to give our children. It's not about things. Things don't spoil children. And I tell people, give them. They don't spoil them. It is how you deal with them. So the, the parents of today want to bond. Oh, my child is my friend. We have KB. She tells me everything. And science is going to show you where that is all wrong. Even you know as a child that when you are with your friends, you pleased your friends. And when you are with your parents, you pleased your parents. You think you are the one who is sort of being done to. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and they are like, ah, daddy, when ah, mommy is happy, I am happy. happy. You see, why do they do that? It is not intentional because they are badly behaved or anything. It is science. The part of the brain that deals with reasoning and judgment and all that difficult thinking starts growth at the age of 13 and is fully mature at the age of 25. That is the prefrontal cortex. Before that, they're using the middle back part of the brain, which is the amygdala. That one deals with instant gratification. What is happening now? So when I weigh, what will I benefit from this situation? If my family has laid down the rules, and I know there are consequences for it, I will know that there is a bigger pain when I get back home that with my friends I'll say, you know what, guys. And I saw it amongst my friends. Yeah. There was a friend of our, a neighbor of ours who, when we were going out, he would he'd be like, you guys, you go. Me, my mm -hmm. mother will mm -hmm. finish me. <laughs> and we say he survived yeah, because of that. Finishes. Yes. <laughs> then me, who was liberal, because my mom would leave very early, come back very late. Mm -hmm. And all, she would, all the only accountability she wanted was what I would tell her. What parents need to do is they need to know that a child needs instruction until they are able to start reasoning out this, to, to make judgment of yeah. there is, this is the risk, these are the consequences. Yeah. 
and there is an example but i don't know how much time we have so i'll not, I'll not but then there is an example of whereby there is uh you you there is three guys who are given to drive a car a 16 year old a 36 year old and a 66 year old who do you think drove it better i mean in a maze mm. who do you think drove it better quickly quickly the older one, the older one. yeah okay now after they finished that round yes they gave they brought their peers to be amongst them and watch how they are driving who do you think drove better the 16 year old the 16 year old better. yeah okay who drove worst the 16 year old the 16 year old okay i'll give you the answer straight the 16 at the, the first in the first round they drove more or less the same yeah because they all had the skills physically yes. right mm -hmm. their brains are able to adapt this is a corner break here yes. turn stop mm -hmm. you get when their peers were involved the 16 year old was making all the mistakes because yeah. he was trying to impress friends. Yeah. the friends the 36 year old and the 66 year old had nothing to impress they are doing what they are supposed to do so we say unless you have midlife crisis <laughs> like some of our men maybe me because i missed out on some i don't know <laughs> but you see at a certain that, that's what that's the thing it's the brain it's the brain it's yeah. the brain so you can when you see a child of 16 years old the way they talk the way they respond everything to you matches maturity but they don't have the judgment yet they, they are not able to make those decisions that this they, is risky they appear oh wow them. so bonding boundaries and monitoring so parents for today i will say i don't i will say parents for today make sure you don't miss out on any of the three don't concentrate only on bonding, bonding. very yeah. very insightful bill thank you so much for sharing with us that was really really insightful on on addiction and not just yeah. with substances mm. addictions with phones there's yeah. so much yes. addiction going on if you have any questions the number on the screen down here do share with us in our comment section what if you know anyone struggling with an addiction and bill will be able to answer some of your questions until next time with love from bump love